Thanks to Birch for sponsoring this video. Their big Memorial Day sale starts May 15th where they'll be offering 25% off. So don't forget to mark your calendars. Hello furniture friends, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I'm about to start working on this coffee table circa 1989 that I just thrifted for $20. I'm gonna be stripping off this orange oak finish and giving it a lighter, brighter whitewash look instead. Usually when I find tables like this at the thrift shop, there are really thin wood veneer over top of a particle board frame. So I was really surprised when I got up close to this one and saw that it was actually solid oak. The thing that I look for first to be able to tell the difference between a veneer and a solid wood is actually to follow the grain across the piece and if you go over the edge and the grain continues in the same direction, it's a pretty good chance that it's solid wood. But before I dig in and start making a mess, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of this video. When we moved across the country into our new home a full year ago now, we decided to treat ourselves with some brand new birch mattresses. We have one upstairs in our primary bedroom and another one down here in our basement guest suite. And we could not be happier with our choice to go with birch. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, so comfortable and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made in America and crafted with fair trade cotton and sustainable New Zealand wool. It's nice to know that they work with ethical partners that adhere to really strict social, environmental, and economic standards. It's also comforting to know that they are Green Guard Gold certified, which means that their products have all been tested for VOCs, phthalates, and formaldehyde, and they're really safe for sensitive individuals with no chemical off-gassing. I'm a super hot sleeper and I found that the organic materials in these mattresses really help to keep me cool and regulating my body temperature through the night. And unlike synthetic mattresses, these are hypoallergenic and mildew resistant. Each birch mattress comes with two of their eco rest pillows that are made from recycled plastic bottles. So they're breathable and they're better for the environment. But I think the thing that I love most is how easy it is to order a new mattress online and have it delivered right to your front door. It comes rolled up in a box and it is super easy to set up all by yourself. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. So if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried yet, you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. I have honestly been amazed at the quality of sleep that I get in our new bed and all of the guests that we've hosted here have had very similar things to say. So if you're in the market for a new mattress, I would highly recommend checking out Birch. Again, their big Memorial Day sale starts May 15th, or you can always head to birchliving.com slash Katie Scott to save 20%. Okay, let's go get messy. So here's what we're working with. It looks like someone has already had a go at refinishing the top of this table. It's definitely been sanded down and resealed with something, but it's a pretty patchy job and the color on the top is much lighter than it is on the legs. There are still some spots of damage visible on the top, especially around the edge, but structurally the table is completely solid. I don't think all of the screws that are in the legs are original, so they've already been reinforced. And I think whoever worked on this last actually glued the base and the top together. I was kind of hoping that I could unscrew all of the pieces and work on everything separately, but I really don't want to risk damaging anything by trying to separate the glue. To get the lighter whitewash look that I want, I first need to remove all of the finish that's on here and get the whole table back to bare wood. There are a few different ways to go about doing that. I don't really feel like going through the goopy hazardous waste mess of a chemical varnish stripper today. So I think I'm gonna have a go at sanding first. Before I start sanding any surface, I always give it a good clean with a degreaser just so that I'm not accidentally grinding any dirt, grease, or old furniture polish residue down into the porous wood. I have some 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander, which is about the coarsest grit that I'd recommend for a wood surface so that you don't accidentally remove too much material or cause a ton of those 
little swirl marks or pigtails that are really easy to get with a mechanical sander. And remember, sanding is a slow process. You really want to let the machine do all the work and you're just guiding it slowly across the surface. I should also say that you do not need an expensive professional grade sander like mine to do this. I've used my Ryobi Orbital Sander from Home Depot for years and it can handle a job like this just fine. This is how the top is looking after my initial strip sand. Still a little bit splotchy, but my finished sanding is going to even all of that out. I started this little patch along the apron and this old finish is proving to be just as tough, if not tougher than the top. So I think I'm going to pop the table up onto my workbench and try and get through this top layer with my carbide scraper instead. This little scraper has saved me hours and hours and hours of sanding. My blade has been very well used this year and is pretty dull, but luckily the Amazon man just dropped off a fresh one for me. This is gonna let me just shave that tough finish off of the surface and then I can go back with my sander and get whatever's left. Once I had most of the finish off, I went back to my 80 grit sandpaper to grind off the rest of the finish and the stain and also all of that old felt mess that's on the bottom of the legs. switching out to my little 3x4 detail sander to get into all of these corners where the orbital sander just won't fit. But again, as much as I love my surf prep sanders, a little triangle mouse sander from the hardware store or even an oscillating multi-tool would be perfect to get sanding like this done. Okay, the table is stripped, she's naked, but I'm not finished sanding yet. Now I need to go back over everything with some 120 grit to start smoothing out all of the roughness that I've created and buffing out any of those little sanding swirls that I've inevitably left in the wood. This really starts to polish down that grain and you can see here the difference on the top between sanded with just the 80 grit and sanded with the 120. Now I'll go over everything one more time with some 180 grit for the final smooth out. I find personally that doing my last sand by hand is the best way for me to make sure that I get all of those little imperfections buffed out. You could do this with the sander though if you wanted to. this sanding thing for about four hours straight now but I'm finally ready to vacuum up my dust and then we can move on to the whitewash. I'm just wiping up any dust that's on the wood with a damp cloth and you can see here how yellow it turns when it gets wet. That's the color that the wood would be if I put a clear coat on it right now and that is not the look I want.
To do a paint wash, all you need is a little bit of water-based paint and water. I've got a bunch of leftovers in my furniture paint collection, and I think for this white wash, I'm gonna use this Cashmere by Fusion Mineral Paint, but you could use any water-based paint you've got, even those little acrylic craft paints. There's only a few tablespoons of paint left in this jar, so I'm just gonna dump a bunch of water right in here, and there is no recipe or measurements for this. If you want something more pigmented, add less water to your paint. And if you want something really light and discreet, add more water. It's as easy as that. Now I'm just gonna brush this mixture over the wood. I'm gonna work one surface at a time though so that nothing's drying out on me before I have a chance to work with it. Once I've got each surface covered, I'll brush everything out in the direction of the wood grain. You can let it kind of soak in for a minute or two, or you can wipe it back right away. Play around. Every piece of wood is gonna be different, so figure out what works on your project. And once I was ready to, I just grabbed a lint-free rag and wiped back and forth, again, going in the direction of the wood grain to remove any excess paint. And there you go. It's not a massive difference from the bare wood color, but now it's just a bit softer and it's not going to turn that yellow color when I seal it up. This is a completely buildable finish too. If you want more of an effect on there, you can go back and do another layer. It's a really fun one to just play around with. I wanted to show you this too while I'm down on the floor. All of these little fuzzies are wood fibers that have plumped up from the water that I just brushed on. This is what people mean when you hear them say raising the grain or popping the grain. Sometimes before you apply a stain or a finish to a wood surface, you will wipe it down with water to get all of these fine little fibers to stand up and then you can sand them off and when you're ready to apply your finish, the surface will stay perfectly smooth. I'm gonna leave those there for now though. two passes around the whole table with my whitewash and I'm happy with how it's looking so I'm gonna let this dry for a few hours and then I can start sealing it up. This is so pretty. I'm going to protect this now with a few layers of Bears water-based polyurethane in a matte finish. You always want to give poly a very thorough stir before you use it just to make sure that all of the components are evenly distributed. They tend to separate and stuff settles to the bottom. I'm also going to pour a little bit of this into a separate container so that I'm not dipping my brush in and accidentally contaminating a whole can of top coat with some garage debris. Since this is a wood finish though, with all of the grain and natural texture on here, I actually don't need to be super careful with my application anyway. I just get the poly on there, again, one surface at a time, and then quickly brush back through it with long, even passes to get everything evened out and any brush strokes going in the same direction as the wood grain. Now that that paint is sealed in there and my first layer of top coat is dry, I can go over the table with some 400 grit sandpaper, which is really fine, and get all of that raised grain smoothed out. I didn't want to do that before my first coat of poly because I'd be taking some of the color off with the wood fibers. Once I'm done this, I'm going to brush on two more layers, which should be plenty of protection for a high traffic surface like this. And then I'm all done. It's still giving 80s or early 90s vibes, but in a trendy retro way. I think this whitewashed or pickled oak, as it was called in its day, is the perfect fresh new finish for this beautiful solid coffee table. Not bad for 20 bucks and a day's worth of sanding. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel for an eclectic mix of furniture flips and leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts on this one. Thank you again to Birch for sponsoring this video and for your continued support of the channel. And thank you to all of you who keep coming back and watching each week. 
I think I'm going to go curl up in my bed early tonight after a long day of sanding and I'll catch you all next time.